Y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready for the word? All right, y'all come on and go with us to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I know it's familiar. It's the same scripture Bishop taught last week. I'm going to tell you about that in just a second. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. And it reads, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, <clears throat> the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south of, to the Lebanon, to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You may be seated. You may be seated. Can you do me a favor and tell your neighbor the title of the conversation this morning is it's time it's time so as I told y'all this, this scripture is very familiar Joshua chapter 1 Bishop came from this scripture last week and I gotta tell y'all last week Bishop almost jumped into my whole entire lesson he almost jumped into my whole entire lesson. He, he came from the same scripture. As soon as Bishop said, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, I knew right then I was in trouble. <laughs> I elbowed Keisha. I, ain't gonna, I almost got a little bit of attitude, a little bit. I did. You said I did. Yeah, I did. I'm going to tell the truth. I said, I know he ain't sitting here <laughs> teaching my word. At least I thought it was my word. And so, and so as he continued, as he continued and he told y'all what the title of the lesson was, you know, the time has come. I said, oh man, now he didn't jump both feet into my lesson. The time has come. And the, and the thing about it, y'all, I guess the thing, the reason why I had probably had a little bit of attitude is because I was excited, Pastor Ferber, to preach what I felt like God had gave me. I was excited. I felt like God had gave me a little head start. I knew what I wanted to talk, talk about, and I knew, felt like God had just gave me something good. I felt like how Bishop be telling y'all he feel when he got a word in him, and he just, he just busting at the seams, and he can't wait to come in here and tell y'all what thus said the Lord. That's how I was feeling. I had my first, I thought I had my first moment. I was like, I know I'm going to tell them what thus said the Lord, Pastor Ferber. <laughs> You know, and then it seemed like God then messed around and told Bishop to cook the same thing he told me to cook. But then as I was sitting there with an attitude, God told me something. Y'all know what God told me? He told me, he said, as good as Bishop's word is, and it was good. Wasn't it real good? He said, as good as Bishop's word was, it was premature. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, man, God, it was premature. He said, yeah, it was premature. And I'm going to tell y'all why it was premature. The story said the Lord told Joshua, Moses, my servant, is gone. Therefore, the time has come. But the thing is, last week, Moses won't go. <laughs> last week, Moses was still here. But this week, 
today, right now, somebody shout, it's time. It's time. It's time. The Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come. Tell your neighbor, it's time. It's time. Moses, y'all, is gone. But how many of y'all know that Moses being gone is not necessarily a bad thing? Moses being gone means it's time. Well, what is it time for? The story said it's time for you to lead these people. Which means to me that it's time for you, me, us all to step into, Pastor Furry, leadership. It's time for lead positions. It's time for us to have supervisor positions. It's time for head director positions. It's time for us to enter into entrepreneurship. It's time for us to walk into leadership. It's time for you to run something. It's, it's time for you to boss up. It's time for you to take charge. It, it, it means that God getting ready to throw the keys over to you so you can run things. Somebody say, it's time. It's time. It's time. And not only did he say it's time for us to lead, but he said it's time for us to cross over the Jordan into the land that he has given us. See, what we got to realize is the promise was given to us with Moses, but it wasn't until Moses was gone that it was time for the promise to be fulfilled. So I know Moses is gone, but when Moses left, it was time. I know we hate to see Moses go, but when Moses was gone, it was a sign that things are about to happen. I know we sad to see Moses go, but when Moses is gone, it was a sign that God is about to move. I know we hate to see Moses go, but when Moses is gone, it's a sign that we get ready to receive what God has promised us. Bishop, we hate to see you go, sir, but we glad that you get to ascend because as you ascend, it means it's time for us to receive our blessings from God. Somebody just say, it's time. It's time. It's time. Some of us have been praying for a long time, but God says today, it's time. Some of us have been seeking him for a while, but today God says, it's time. Some of us have been questioning God for a little while, but on this morning, God says, it's time. It's time. Well, what is it time for? The first thing we see is it's time for us, number one, to receive, I already said, God's promises. It's time for us to receive God's promises. See, today, for, for those of y'all who may be feeling a little down because Bishop is not here, today is not a sad day. Today is not a sad day because Moses being gone is a gift to the people. Because Moses being gone activates a promise that God had given. It's in verse 3, where it starts at the beginning of the chapter, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses, the servant is going, therefore the time has come. And then in verse 3, it says, I promise you what I promised Moses. So Moses being gone activates the promise. He can't promise us what he promised Moses while Moses is still here. Moses had to leave in order for you to get your promise. So it ain't no point of you being sad today because Bishop ain't here. Bishop had to go in order for you to get what God then told you. Or better yet, Bishop said that this year was the year of release. We just didn't know how soon we was going to have to release him. So all oh, this is, we shouting, it's the year of release, it's the year. Now we scared, we mad because we had to release Bishop. But Moses had to get released so that we could get our promise fulfilled. It says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. So it's time for us to now walk in the promises that God gave us. Moses is now gone. So then what is it that, he prom that God promised you? Because if Moses is gone, that means you and I should be expecting our promise to be fulfilled. So if Moses is gone, what is it that God promised you? And if he said, wherever you set your foot will be land that he gave you, I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting ready to start walking. I'm getting ready to start putting my feet just everywhere. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I'm just, I'm going over here. I'm just going to put my feet over here. I like that too. That look real good. I'm going to go ahead and put my feet. I put my feet everywhere. Y'all remember the old school game, Twister, where you had to put your, I, I got my feet on red, blue, green, yellow. I'm just putting my feet everywhere because he didn't say where you put your feet. It just said wherever you put your feet. 
which is why we got these doors over here. I know y'all looking, trying to figure out what these doors got to do with time. It don't got nothing to do with time, but, but what it does represent, if y'all notice, the doors are already open because it's time. And God then said, wherever you put your feet is going to be land I didn't give you. See, normally when you come to a door, the door closed. You got to knock. You got to wait for it to be open. But since it's time, the doors are already open. So I don't know about you. You better just walk through that open door. You better just, just start putting your feet. Just, just put your feet. Just put your feet wherever. The door already open. Come on, get something, girl. Put your feet. Y'all better get up. Put your feet. Just put your feet. Just put your feet. Somebody say, it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. He said, wherever you place your feet. He said, wherever you place your feet. So I don't know about you, but God has said it's time. So whatever it is that God has promised you, if I was you, I'd be trying to go get it. I'd be chasing after it. I'd be going after it with reckless abandon. Look, use me as an example, y'all. As scared as I am, God has said it's time. So I'm going after every promise God got for me. Listen, let's, let's not be in the midst of the right time this morning and miss your opportunity to receive your promise from God. Yeah, I'm scared to follow behind Bishop, but God said it's time. And he gave me assurance by promising me wherever my feet would be. Go ahead and walk through. He gave me assurance by promising me wherever I set my feet will be mass. Whatever I put my hands to will be completed. Whatever I put my mind to, I will accomplish because God said it's time for us to receive his promise. Yeah, if, if you need to walk through the door, come on and walk through the door. If you need, if you need to, you better put your feet, just put your feet. Don't be scared to admit, don't be scared to get your time this morning. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for us to receive the promise. It's time for us to receive the promise. He said, wherever you put your feet, wherever you put your feet, wherever you put your, which means, which means you ain't even got to make it to the door. Just start walking. Just put your feet. You ain't got to make it to the door. It said, wherever you put your feet. Wherever you put your feet, it's time. It's time. What is it that God found? If you ain't, if you ain't moving your feet right now, if I was you, I'd just start going down the roller decks in my mind of things that God promised me and just expect it to come. He said, it's time. Moses is gone, which means it's time for the promise to be fulfilled. What has he promised you? It's time. Whatever it is you've been praying about, it's getting ready to happen. Whatever you've been asking God for, it's getting ready to happen. I'm so glad, Bishop, has now been elevated. Because when Moses is gone, God said, I promise you what I promised Moses. We saw how Bishop could walk in the way and God make things happen. He said, I promise you what I promised Moses. We saw how Bishop could go through stuff and come out on the other side. God said, I promise you what I call promised Moses. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. God's shifting us into a, into a moment of worship, y'all. He's shifting us into a moment of worship. I'm not going to force the lesson. He's he pushing us into a moment of worship. He said, it's time.
In fact, let's praise God for Bishop's ascension. Let's praise, let's praise God for Bishop's ability to move on. Thank you, God, for allowing our Moses to stretch the runway. Thank you, God, for allowing our Moses to be gone so that we can receive what you got for us. Thank God right now. Come on, go into worship. Thank God. God, a gigantic God, 
a God who sits high and looks low, a God who holds all things, a God who knows all my secrets and still looks upon me in spite of me, a God who keeps me in perfect peace, a God who dries my tears when they fall, a God who knows my heart, a God who says that if you gonna cry about it, I'm gonna meet the need. And you better believe that if it's on your heart, then it's on God's mind. If you can worry about it, you can pray about it. God, we thank you for promise after promise after promise after promise. I'm walking in promise season. Everything that God promised me, I'm walking in this season. Everything that God said that I'm gonna get, I'm walking in it. Every promise is mine, it belongs to me. Everything that God said that I would get, it belongs to me. It belongs to me. So whatever the Lord says, it belongs to me. Y'all better throw y'all promises out in the atmosphere because yeah, yeah. as Pastor said earlier, not only are you going to get your promise, but yeah, you're going to yeah, get yeah. promise from generations. From generations, absolutely. The story said, the story said, he said, he said, and when you, when you jump down, I think it was verse six, it said, it's time for you to lead these people, but not only was it time for you to lead the people, it said, it's going to lead you to possess all the land that I swore to their ancestors I would give them. So not only today are you going to be receiving the promise that he gave you, we can ready to start walking in the promises that he gave your mama. You can ready to start walking in the promises that he gave grandma and them. You can ready to start walking in the promises on the behalf of people that you never even seen because it's time. We can ready to walk in the stuff that grandma prayed for. Anybody grateful you had a praying grandmama? Anybody grateful your mama prayed for you when you couldn't pray for yourself? Whisper to your neighbor, Moses is gone, but it's time. Moses is gone, but it's time. So number one, when Moses is gone, it's time for us to receive God's promise. But not only are we going to receive God's promise starting today, but well, point two, we just going to walk through it. It's time for us to receive God's protection. It's time for us to receive God's protection. It says, no one will be able to stand against you as long as I live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Now, everybody loves the part where it says, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I like the part where it says, I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. That's the part that I like. I, I, I love the fact that nobody going to be able to mess with you and, you know, nobody going to be able to bother you. But I love the part that it says, I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. Because it was some things that Moses had to go through in the Bible. Moses had a few instances in the Bible where people was trying to get him. And every single time somebody was trying to get Moses, God was with him and Moses would be able to make an escape. And, and, and so on today, what we got to realize is, I love the part where he says, I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses because I seen some things that our Moses had to go through. And so I want to be like Moses. I want God to be with me as he was with Moses. Moses had to deal with his daughter going through meningitis, but God was with him and she's still here today. Our Moses, y'all remember he had to deal with cancer, but God was with him 
and he's still here today, right? So I don't know about y'all. I'm glad to know that he's going to be with me as long as I leave, but I want to know that he's going to be with me just like he was with Moses. If he kept Moses in his right mind, he'll keep us in our right mind. If he kept Moses out of financial bondage, he'll keep us out of financial bondage. If he kept Moses scandal free, he'll keep us scandal free. If he kept Moses from sickness and disease, he's going to keep us from sickness and disease. Somebody shout, it's time. It's time. It's time. Number one, it's time for us to receive God's promise. Secondly, it's time for us to receive God's protection. And then number three, let's switch it up a little bit. It's time, y'all, for us to reverence what was left behind. It's time for us to reverence what was left behind. It's in verse 7. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. The interesting thing about the whole transition story between the Israelites and Joshua and Moses is that the promise was given with Moses, but it was fulfilled after Moses. But here in, in verse 7, the Lord is intentional with reminding Joshua to stick with the instructions that Moses gave him. Almost um, doubles down on it by saying, don't deviate from it. Basically reminding us to not become distracted. And it says only then will we be successful. So although the promise is meant for the Israelites once Moses is gone, they still won't be able to be successful without upholding what Moses deposited into them. So today, let's not get so excited because Moses is no longer with us. And I know we're excited that we're getting ready to walk into all the promises of God, which we are, y'all. But the only way we're going to be successful is by honoring and upholding the lessons and the teachings of our Moses. Right? So Bishop is gone, y'all. And so now it's time for us to follow the wisdom and the guidance and the instructions that Bishop left us. That's how we're going to be successful in all these promises that God is getting ready to drop on us. That's how God is going to be able to take the mountain to the next chapter. It says, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. And here's what I think. I don't think that, I, well, I think that God knows that sticking to the instructions of Moses is not going to necessarily be as easy as we think. Which is why he tells us to be strong and courageous. See, I don't think he's telling us to be strong and courageous because people are going to act crazy. They're going to be talking about us. I don't think that's what he's saying. I think he's telling us to be strong enough and, courage and courageous enough to continue to obey the instructions that Moses gave us, although he's not here anymore. Right? And so I've been telling y'all all this morning that it's time. And so now it's time for us to show a little discipline. Now it's time for us to show a little honor. It's time for us to show a little respect. It's time for us, y'all, to now, number three, reverence what Moses left behind. So number one, it's time for us to receive God's promise. Number two, it's time for us to receive God's protection. Number three, it's time for us to reverence what was left behind. And then real quick, number four, it's time for us to receive God's success. It's time for us to receive God's success. It says, verse 8, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. How many of y'all know there's a difference between success and God's success? There's a difference between success and God's success. And I want God's success. Let me tell you the difference. The regular success can come and go. Regular success can be taken away. Regular success may be temporary. But God's success is sustained by him. 
God's success is everlasting. God's success no man can take away. The Bible says this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. So today, I know today might be a bittersweet day. I know we may have mixed emotions, but now is not the time for us to be down. Now it's time for us to study this book of instruction continually. Now it's time for us to meditate on it day and night. Now it's time for, the, for us to uphold the teachings of our Moses. Then, y'all, and only then, will we, the Mount, be successful and prosper and succeed in all we do. It's time. It's time, y'all. It's time, number one, for us to receive God's promise, to receive God's protection, but then to reverence what Bishop left behind. And I believe if we do all those things, it's time, y'all, for us to receive God's success. And not just here, you can clap, but not just here in the mount. But you getting ready to receive God's success in your own life. See, you, you may have had a little success before, and you know how success go. It kind of come, it kind of go. You going good, and it seemed like it turned good. But now it's time for us to receive God's success. You know how I know it's time for us to receive God's success? Because Moses gone. That was the promise. That was the promise. He said, I promised you what I promised Moses. But it was only after Moses had left. Moses is gone now, y'all. So we should be excited that it's time. We should be excited that we're getting ready to receive God's success. Some of us may have been praying about some things. Some of us may have been, you know, just going through some stuff, asking God, man, when you going to do it? When you going to do it? When you going to do it? He sent us back here today to tell you, it's time. It's time, Pastor Furby. Dr. Angie, it's time. Howard, it's time, bro. I'm finished, y'all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I hope we said something today that you can take and apply to your life today. Y'all know we say it every week. We don't like to give you nothing that you can't take and apply to your life until next week, next month, or in the by and by, as they say in the old school church. We like to give you something that you can take and apply to your life today. Y'all, what a first Sunday, y'all. Ain't God good? Can y'all give God praise for today? Thank you, God. Before we leave, y'all, y'all know we can't let y'all get out of here without the opportunity to make what we believe is the best decision you could ever possibly make, which is, which is to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And so if you're online this morning, I ain't welcome y'all this morning, but welcome to our online partners. If you are here, if you are online this morning and you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning, or if you would like to rededicate your life to Christ or become a partner of this amazing church, all you got to do is text TMC to the number 71441. If you are here in the room, we ready to praise God for you. You can step out into the aisle and come down and meet us down here right now. I promise you, we're not going to put you on the spot. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to make you say any remarks. Can y'all praise God for a brother right here? If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Can y'all praise God? For a sister coming right here. What's up? Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Come on, y'all. Let's praise God. Come on, y'all. Y'all see, we ain't going to embarrass you. We ain't going to put you on the spot. Now is your time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Say it's time. It's time. It's time. Come on now. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Yes, God. Yes, God. Look, Bishop told us the other night, he said, when people come today, they're going to represent our first fruit. Can y'all praise God for the first fruit? If you want to be a part.
part of the first fruit. Now is your time. Come on and be a part of the first fruit. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church, y'all. Come on. We ready to go crazy for God. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can y'all praise God for my son? Love you, boy. Y'all, we at 157. Let's go ahead and get to 160, y'all. Come on, let's get three more. Three more, three more, three more, three more. Accept, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Let's get three more, three more, three more. Come on. Come on, y'all. Let's get three more. Come on, God. Come on, God. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. I'm going to learn from Bishop. Bishop said if you put God out there, God got to come through. Let's get three more. That's one. That's one. Can we get two more? Come on now. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. One, two, three, four. Come on, God. Let's praise God. Now what to him who is able to keep us from falling and to keep us from falling. Now it's him who is able to present us faultless. <laughs> Come on, let's praise God. That's another one. Come on, y'all, let's praise God. Y'all ain't ready. Come on. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ and become a partner of this amazing church. Yeah. We ain't gonna rush it. Do we got one more? Now what to him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I call each and every one of us blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, and blessed when we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.